Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Barker Codes. In this short presentation, you'll learn the basics of Barker Codes and why they're used in pulse compression radar systems. Let's start with a brief refresher on pulsed radar. At the most basic level, a pulsed radar system detects objects by transmitting short bursts of RF energy, or pulses, and measuring the time it takes those pulses to return from the target. In very simple radar systems, the frequency and phase of the transmitted radar pulse remain constant over the duration of the pulse. These are often called unmodulated pulses. The length of the pulse is very important. If we want high precision in our range measurements, or if we want to separate closely spaced targets, we need to use shorter pulses. However, this is difficult for a number of reasons, such as the need for higher peak powers. One way of getting around this issue is to use longer pulses, but vary the frequency or phase over the duration of the pulse. This is called pulse modulation or modulation on pulse. You'll also hear this called pulse compression because we're essentially using a longer pulse but achieving the same results as a shorter pulse. There are a number of different ways of compressing pulsed signals, but most of them can be divided into two categories, frequency modulation and phase modulation. In frequency modulation, we vary the frequency during the duration of the pulse. This can be done in many different ways, sometimes linearly, sometimes up, sometimes down, etc. Linear frequency modulation is probably the most common form of pulse compression, or pulse modulation, and you'll often hear linear frequency modulation referred to as chirp. In phase modulation, the phase of the signal is changed at various points during the pulse. Phase modulation is usually implemented by splitting the pulse into a series of identical width subranges. Each subrange is then assigned either a zero degree or 180 degree phase shift. Traditionally, a zero degree phase shift is represented by a one or a plus sign, and a 180 degree phase shift is represented by a zero or a minus sign. Note that in this example, we have only two possible phase shifts, zero and 180 degrees. So we call this a binary code. There are other phase modulation compression schemes that have more than two states, and these are called polyphase codes. But in this presentation, we'll limit our discussion to binary codes. But how do we decide how many ranges to split the pulse into, or which phase each range should have? Remember that our goal is to get better accuracy when determining the delay of the received pulse, and this is done using something called correlation. Conceptually, we measure correlation by sliding the received pulse past the transmitted pulse and seeing how closely they match at each given time offset. Ideally, we'd like our pulse to have a pattern of phase changes such that this pattern matches itself strongly at one and only one offset, thus yielding a clear and unambiguous peak with a minimum possible energy elsewhere. Although our goal is a single unambiguous correlation peak that corresponds to target range or distance, you may have noticed that the correlation process produced smaller peaks as well. These peaks are called side lobes. Minimizing the level of these so-called time or range side lobes is a very important part of pulse compression radar design because it makes it easier for us to find the true peak. It turns out that there are some phase sequences or codes that have very desirable correlation properties and produce very low side lobes. The most important of these are Barker codes named after R.H. Barker who first published a paper on them in 1953. Barker codes have three main advantages. First, they produce a very high peak to side lobe ratio. Second, they have the theoretical minimum energy in the side lobes. And third, the side lobe energy is uniformly distributed. Although Barker codes are best known for their use in radar, Barker's original application had nothing at all to do with radar. In fact, Barker codes are now used in a wide variety of non-radar applications, such as 802.11b Wi-Fi, saw-based RFID tags, ultrasound, etc. There are actually multiple Barker codes. There are Barker codes with lengths 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 11, and 13. The longer the code, the lower the side lobe level. Side lobe level can be calculated using minus 20 log n, where n is the length of the code. And interestingly, despite extensive research over the last 65 years, no additional Barker code sequences have been discovered. When looking at Barker coded pulses in the time domain, you'll often notice small notches in the RF magnitude. This is because the RF carrier wavelength is usually not an integer multiple of the subpulse width. Therefore, we see notches at the phase reversal points. 
The Barker 13 coated pulse shown here has six notches in the pulse magnitude, and each one of these notches corresponds to the six phase reversals in the code. So in summary, pulse compression allows radar systems to use longer pulses and still obtain some of the advantages of shorter pulses. This pulse compression usually involves changing the frequency or phase of the pulse as it's being transmitted. Barker codes are one of the most important types of phase-based pulse compression because they yield a high peak-to-side lobe ratio, minimum side lobe levels, and a uniform distribution of side lobe energy. There are nine total Barker codes of various lengths, and research seems to indicate that there are no additional Barker codes. And lastly, even though we discussed Barker codes in terms of radar applications, they are also used in many non-radar applications as well. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Barker Codes. Thanks for watching.